proudly we hail. City where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our presentation is titled, The Bridegroom Was Late, and it's the story of a sergeant who realized his wedding day would be hectic, but had no idea how close he would come to missing it. Our first act curtain in just one moment, but first, here's an important announcement for capable and ambitious young women. There are many fine career openings in the Women's Army Corps. If you're between 18 and 34, a high school graduate, single, and otherwise qualified, the Women's Army Corps offers you an important, interesting future while serving your country. You visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station now. Get all the details. And now the proudly we hail production of The Bridegroom Was Late. Picture, if you will, an army chapel in Mannheim, Germany. The chapel is crowded with the friends of Sergeant Harry Smith and Corporal Elizabeth Saunders. All the girls in Elizabeth's outfit are here. There are officers and enlisted men who serve with and who like Harry. All brides are beautiful, and Elizabeth is positively radiant. That is, she was radiant about four hours ago when she expected Harry to show up for the wedding. Well, the chaplain is trying to put a good face on the situation, but let's admit it, it doesn't look as though the groom is going to show up. Everybody has come to the conclusion that here is a poor girl who is going to be left waiting at the church. Nobody knows quite what to say. One by one and in small groups, people make embarrassed excuses in strained tones and depart. Well, then, here the chapel is now deserted except for Elizabeth, her dad, and the chaplain. So now you must picture a car pulling up and Harry and me getting out and running up the steps. Four hours late on his wedding day, Harry finally confronts his, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say, blushing bride. Well, I'm so glad you could make it. Jim, you've got to explain to her what happened. You keep out of this, James Bell. Is this your young man, Liz? Step outside with me, fella. I think I'm still in shape to give you the licking of your life. I I'm not the one, sir. Harry's the bridegroom. I have never been so miserable, so embarrassed in all my life. Now, look, honey, I'm here. The main thing is I showed up. Thank you. Do you want the Medal of Honor just for showing up on your wedding day? Uh, Jim, please, tell her what happened. I am not interested. If you can't be on time for your own wedding, you can... If you've ruined the ceremony... Hey, Mr. Saunders, you look like a gentleman who believes in fair play. At least tell her to listen. Now, Liz, this sergeant is right. You can at least listen. Oh! my friends. The colonel was here, too. I'm not sure I want to marry a man who thinks so little of me he can't be on time for his own wedding. Jim, you promised me you'd help explain. I told you the colonel was here. He's the colonel of your new outfit. Everybody was cooperative enough to arrange the transfer for you so we could be together after we were married. Well, the wedding is off, and I don't mind telling you you can apply for another transfer and get out. Uh, Mr. Saunders, believe me, we can explain. Now, can't you make a listen? I'm afraid not, son. She's like her mother was. No one can get a word in edgewise when she's got steam up. Oh, Liz. Look, Liz. Harry's a hero today. He's a hero for two reasons. First, he's getting married, and that's enough to make a hero None out of None of your man. wives cracks James Bell. It's bad enough. Second, he became a hero because of a service we had to perform for the intelligence section on our way up here from Munich. Oh, really? Well, make it good. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm in the Army, too, you know. You're a rifle platoon sergeant. Harry's a supply room sergeant. What have the two of you got to do with intelligence? Papa, I'm going back to the barracks and then change these clothes. You and I will go out to dinner. But you can listen. All right, I'll listen. But I won't believe a word of it. Jim, tell her, huh? Well, uh, you see, it all started when we left Munich. We were driving in Harry's car. <laughs> Go 
going to be a little tough leading the old outfit, Jim. That's the army. I'll miss you in the gang. If you don't take your foot off of that gas pedal, we may be leaving the outfit together. Well, I don't want to be late. You don't know Liz. Let me show up just one minute late and I'm a goner. You know, you still got time. For what? Well, boy, this is a serious step you take. Look, slow down. How we got plenty of time. Okay, okay. What's better? Hey, if you're scared now, how are you going to be after you're married? Boy, I can see that ring through your nose. Rave on, chum. One day you'll meet a girl, and I'll be around to give you the full treatment. Don't count on it. I haven't lost all my marbles yet. Hey, a blowout! Harry, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. How about you, Jim? Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, man, lucky we were going slower. Are we lucky? Look what we did to that tree. Look what we did to the car, the whole front end. Jim, how are we going to get to Mannheim? I'll be late. Where are we? We're just outside of Koenighurst. Well, that's a break. Isn't this where that old guy, uh, you know, what, uh, Fritz Muller, he runs a garage? So what? It'll take a week to put this baby back into shape. We don't have to wait for him to fix the car. We can borrow one from him and be on our way. Come on, let's leave the old heap here and get over to Muller's garage on the double. <laughs> not good. I have no car here. My own, it is wet with paint. This one, it cannot run. Oh, Fritz, what are we going to do? We have to get to Mannheim. There is a train, uh, but it does not leave for two hours. Oh, that's great. I wish I could be of help, Sergeant. Had you come earlier, I could have got for you a car, but now... I... Whose car is that? Oh, the two men, they have been traveling long. They came in, they wanted the oil changed. They have gone to the hotel. They say to me, we are going to sleep for some hours. You bring the car around this afternoon. Oh, yeah, listen, Fritz, be a good guy. Huh? Sergeant Smith is in a jam. Lend us that car. Oh, how can it be done? Look, look, I... look. I got a buddy in Wienhahn. That's only about 30 miles from here. Let Smitty and me drive this car over there. He'll lend us his car to go the rest of the way, and I'll have this car back here for you. It'll all take less than an hour. Yeah, but these men who own the car, I do not know them. How will I explain well, to them? Well, you have to explain. That... Like you said, they're at the hotel sleeping. How are they going to know? Here, let me, let me use your phone. Fritz, 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 it'll all work out. You'll see. You'll see, boy, you'll see. Oh, hello, hello. Lieutenant Daly, please. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> Fritz, Fritz, don't look so worried. Just trust me, will you? Uh, uh, hello, Lieutenant. Th uh, this is Sergeant James Bell. Yeah. Look, sir, I've, I've got Harry Smith with me, and we're in a jam. Oh, no, no, no real trouble, but you see, we had a little accident. No, sir, nobody's hurt. Nobody's hurt. Look, could we borrow your car to get to Mannheim? Oh, swell, Lieutenant. Well, you see, Harry is going to get married now that we have your car. Yeah. Only one thing, Lieutenant. We have to borrow another car to get to your place. Could someone drive it right back? The guy needs it in a hurry. Oh, well, that's swell. Yeah, we'll be there in 30 minutes, tops. Yes, sir. I'll tell Smitty. We're in. Come on, Fritz. Do your share. But it is not my car, and I do not know this man. Fritz, if Harry doesn't show up at the chapel, she'll never speak to him again. For the rest of his life, he'll be alone. His happiness ruined. Why? Because you didn't lend him a car for just an hour. Can you afford to have that on your conscience, Fritz? Fritz, the car will be back here long before those guys will come around and ask for it. Who, who has to know anything? Well, it is not right that a man should be late for his wedding... Uh, this friend in uh, Wienheim, he will return the car in one hour without fail? Fritz, you got my word. Uh, now that I think, why should you not have the car? Even if they should come by before it is back, I can always say something was wrong with the engine, and uh, one of my mechanics is giving it a test on the road. Yeah, uh, Go on, take the car. Fritz, you saved my life. This whole deal only lasts about 15 minutes. We'll get there in plenty of time. How much further to Weinheim? Oh, say about 10 miles. Hey, listen, Harry, it's my duty as an old-time buddy to ask you this. Are you absolutely sure you want to marry the girl? Oh, let me alone, will you? Hey, slow down, Hal. Look up ahead. Now what? It's roadblock. Those are MPs. They're giving us a signal to stop. Oh, hey, did I remember to take my papers? That'd be all I need right yeah, now. Well, stop the car, will you? 
Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Are you looking for someone? That's right. Who? You, step out. Why? You heard me, mister. You two, out. Lieutenant Hodges, this looks like the car. We don't have a plate number, but the description's almost exact. Well, bring these two in. Jenkins, you drive their car. All right, you two, come with me in the Jeep. And don't try anything. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. Can't we ask you what's going on? Sir, I'm due in Mannheim for a wedding ceremony. Well, I'll say one thing. You certainly sound like two Americans. Sir, we are Americans. Here, look at our papers. Uh. I'll be Sergeant Harry Smith, Sergeant James Bell. Sergeants. I'm pretty sure you're not two red agents masquerading as soldiers. But on the outside chance that these are phony papers, that perhaps you might have stolen them, we'll have to take you back to headquarters for a more complete check. I'm sorry, but it'll take us maybe an hour to clear it all up. An hour? She'll kill me. Lieutenant, his bride is going to be waiting at the church in Mannheim. Look, look, sir, are you by any chance Lieutenant Gerald Hodges? That's right. Well, sir, don't you remember me? You were over at our regiment giving lectures on security. Thanks, sir. I was the non-com Captain Banks assigned to help you with the movie projector. And the film broke. That's right, sir. Bell, Bell, of course. Well, I can identify you positively. I don't have to hold you, but... Better get your friend over to Mannheim fast if you're going to get married. He's going to get married? Say, uh, may, may I ask what it's all about, sir? Well, Sergeant, now I don't know. We got a tip, and I guess it was phony. Let them through, Sergeant Roth. Goodbye, sir. What else is going to happen to us? We blow a tire, we borrow a car, we get stopped by MPs, almost get hauled in. Why? All I want to do is get to Mannheim and get married. Wonder what that was all about. Who knows? Where's the turn off for Weenheim? Should be around here someplace. Yeah, about two miles up. Harry, they had a roadblock set up. They stopped this car. I am willing to put two and two together here. They were expecting somebody to be in this car. You heard what the lieutenant said. He figured that the tip was a phony. Wait a minute. What makes the tip a phony? Just the fact that you and I are in the car. But think back. Suppose we hadn't blown a tire. We would never have got hold of this car. And if this car passed a roadblock, we wouldn't have been in it. What's a genius like you doing as only a non-com in the army? Those two guys sleeping back in the hotel at Weenheim, don't you see? Those guys are agents. They were spotted by someone. The tip-off was sent along up here. They were due to be stopped, but we ruined everything by using their car. We gotta get to a phone. What is this, a plot? Is the whole world out to see I don't show up for my wedding? Look, we can call from Weenheim when we turn over the car and borrow one from your friend. No time for that. Now, here's a sign, Ludwig Stott, one kilometer left. Now, be ready to turn off. I'll have to phone the nearest MPs. Have them get in touch with old Fritz Muller. Have them tell them who the guys are who own the car, and then they can pick them up. Everything, you name it, everything happens to me. Wait a minute, what's the matter with those guys? What guys? Those jokers in the car behind us. Practically on a rear bumper. Open up a little, get away from them. I can't, they're picking up speed, too. He's blowing his horn for. Maybe he wants a pass. Well, what am I doing to stop him? Go ahead, Buster. Go ahead. They're waving at us. Pull over. Kid, we'll never get to Mannheim. Come on, pull over. I'm not stopping for anybody or anything. I would if I were you. Yeah? Yeah. The guy next to the driver is pointing a pistol at us. Oh, brother. Now what? <laughs> You're listening to the proudly we held production of The Bridegroom Was Late and our second act in just one moment. Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that'll assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, and many, many others. Now, you can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job. What's more important, to do it right. So for full details about an exciting career, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, there's no obligation, so plan ahead. Face your tomorrow today. Sergeant Harry Smith, stationed in Germany, is trying to explain to his bride... Corporal Elizabeth Saunders, why he has kept her waiting at the church for four hours. Or rather, his buddy Sergeant James Bell is trying to explain it for him. They had left Munich by car in plenty of time to arrive for the wedding in Mannheim. But their automobile broke down, and a friendly garage keeper had lent him another. 
En route in the borrowed car, they have been stopped twice. Once by military police who had evidently taken them for a couple of other guys, and right now they have been overtaken and forced off the road by a car filled with civilians. Why did you not stop? Did you not expect to meet us along the road? Look, buddy, next. I do not blame you for exercising the utmost caution. I must admit I did not expect you would be in the uniform of American soldiers. Perhaps you are wise to do so. If we had observed you were forced to stop for the military police, if you were certain you would be captured. <laughs> Evidently, you fool them. Jim, what is this joker? Excellent. I see you're both experienced men. You are wise to pretend ignorance until I show you the recognition signal. Uh, here it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, the black button with the red star. Yeah, yeah, of course. I will ride on with you. Uh, Hans, Ivan, take the car back to Munich. I will ride on with the couriers. Come, we must hurry. The documents are being microfilmed now, and you shall have them for a speedy return to headquarters uh, tonight. I will direct you. Let's go, Harry. Are you at liberty to tell me... Um, where you acquired those American uniforms? Oh, we, we got them easily enough. You have the American speech and idiom down to perfection. Have you spent any time in the United States? Uh, yeah, we, we used to live there. Which group are you assigned to? <clears throat> That's a dangerous question, comrade. Oh, I'm sorry. Harry, keep your eye on the road, will you? What's the matter with him? He seems nervous. Oh, he has a personal problem. Turn right here. Here? Yes. It's the second house from the corner. Right, come with me. Good morning, Herr Kraus. They have arrived. My father is down in the cellar developing the films. Come in. I wish to talk with you, Herr Kraus. You will excuse us. Sit down, make yourselves comfortable. Jim, are we crazy? What are we doing here? I figure we're somebody else. Look, I gotta get to Manhattan. Listen, you can always get married, but here are some people who have a bunch of stuff they expect us to take somewhere. Just let's grab it and turn it over to the MPs. What, are you crazy? Any minute they'll have to tell me we're not who they think. Now let's get out of here and get to the cops or the MPs. How can we get out of here? It's a cinch we're being watched. We have to go through with it. But suppose they find out. All we have to do is play it close and we're in. The longer we keep them ignorant, the better our chances are. So just keep stalling. We'll be pulled out of this. You'll see. All we need is time. Time? Do you realize I'm going to be late for my... Don't worry about being late. I'm worried about being alive. But don't worry. Time is working for us. Are you certain they are the couriers? We were told messengers would arrive today. They would be driving a black zebra sedan, license plate number K09456. These, therefore, are our men. Yes. It is only they seem to be so completely American in speech and mannerisms. My dear God, they are evidently highly developed specialists. They must have received the most intense training in American ways. Who knows what other duties they are used for? Yeah, quite probably. Probably you are correct. I wish I knew why I feel dissatisfied. Ours is not to question, Um God. We were told to expect couriers. We were given no descriptions other than their car, which is definite enough. We will follow our orders. If they are not the couriers, it is not our fault. We will not be in a good position. But I am convinced they are the men we expected. They must be. But while we are waiting, I will try to find out what bothers me. I have traveled and studied in the United States. I want to talk with these men. <laughs> Are you acquainted with uh, Colonel Danikov? I'm only acquainted with my orders, Fraulein. I do not discuss any of my superiors. Sergeant, are you ill? You seem so nervous. Well, I, I, I was in the middle of something. When, when, when this came up, I... Ah, yes, of course. We none of us have much time for our private lives, do we? Oh, but look at us. We are sitting here and chatting in English. For what reason? A uh, bullet divide. Fraulein, a part of our training is to speak English and English only at all times. Ah, yes, yes, you are correct. Uh, one so easily acquires a foreign intonation uh, when one is surrounded by people speaking another language. Your English is uh, excellent. Thank you. Excuse me, please. I will see whether the films are ready for you now. 
Listen, how we getting away with it? I don't know. A dame is pumping us, that's for sure. You know how long we've been here, don't you? Right now, at this very minute, I'm supposed to be standing up in front of the chaplain with Liz. Yeah, that's what worries me. It worries you? Yeah, we've been here too long, by my calculation. This place should have been swarming with MPs long ago. You see out the window? Yeah. Is the car we came in still outside? Yeah. Oh, we still got a chance. Keep your eye on me. When I give you the high sign, make a run for it. It's not are they wise? I hope not, but if they are, we're in a bad jam. What I was counting on didn't happen. What was that? Look, I think we're talking too much. Your father says the films are ready, Irmgard. Herr Kraus, I am positive. Of what? These two, they are Americans. Oh? On one of my missions, I was sent to America to study habits and speech patterns. I will stake my life they are Americans. To begin with, they speak no other language. Oh, it's true. When I tried to get them to speak German, they had a plausible excuse. But the fact is, they speak only in English. I think you are being overly uh, cautious. This is not wise. They speak English far too well and far too definitely. I do not understand. To begin with, the TH sound. No foreigner, or perhaps only the exceptional foreigner, can master it completely. We cannot say the TH. Even I have a slight trouble. When I say this or that or thing, there's always the suggestion of an S. Not with them. Secondly, one is from Brooklyn, which forms part of the city of New York. Many of those people have trouble with their NG endings. The NG runs into the next word. The classic example is Long Island. One doesn't speak that way unless one is born into that environment. The nervous one, on the other hand, comes from the northeastern coast from the area called New England. His A sounds are broad, his vowel sounds are nasal. I have studied speech in both these places. I contend that they speak English in a regional accent that are too genuine for any foreigner. What do you suggest? Inform headquarters of our problem by the wireless. Request a description of the men who are supposed to arrive here. If we are wrong, we may be reprimanded for the delay. But if we are right, at least we won't be sent to unpleasant duties much further east of here. I will have your father send out the question in code at once. The answer has just arrived. Will you decode it? Let me have it. Hmm. What? Listen. Two couriers. One fifty years old. You got neither of them is fifty. Hey, the rest. Fifty. About five feet four inches. Weighs one hundred ninety pounds. Two. Is tall, blonde, about twenty-one. Both of the men in the next room are in their early thirties. And this description fits neither of them. Exactly. Evidently, our couriers were intercepted. What are we to do with these two? First, they must be made to talk. I do not think that will be easy. Have Otto, Sergei, Karl, and Mitri... Lend a hand if needed. I will go upstairs and get them. Then we will confront our friends in the next room. Oh, Liz must be chewing her veil a bit so long about now. Forget about Liz, will you? Where are the MPs? They're long overdue. Boy, this is what I gambled on. I went for broke on the hunch that they would have to show up and bail us out. What made you think so? Never mind. Look, let's start edging toward the door. If we, we can make it to the car, okay. If not, start running down the street and holler murder. Come on. Remain seated, what? please. Otto, shoot the first one who tries to escape. Uh-oh. Now, my friends, the question is, shall you make this easy or difficult for yourselves? To begin with, you are not the couriers. You are probably members of American counterintelligence. Suppose you start talking. Nothing to say. Shall my friends here assist you? Believe it or not, there's nothing we can tell you. Sergei, a slight sample, if you please. Klaus, outside! American military police! <clears throat> I got the one with the gun! Hey, guys, in here! In here! Open up, in there! Open up! All right, we got the place around it. Get over against the wall, all of you. Lieutenant, what took you guys so long? You both okay? Yeah. Sergeant, load these people into the truck. Now, let's go. Step it up. Yeah, it's a nice haul. How did you manage to keep these jokers from killing you before we could track you down? Lieutenant, I just got to get to Mannheim. You're on your way now, Sergeant. They expected us. How did you know we'd come? Oh, you had to. It was the only thing that could make sense. Look, you were tipped off about a certain car, right? 
Okay, sir, so the car pulls up and who's in it? Two American soldiers. So what do you have to figure? It's a phony lead. That's nothing new. You get hundreds of wild tips like that, don't you, sir? <laughs> we sure do. Okay, so that's all over as far as you're concerned. Meanwhile, what you didn't know was that this car was due back in Meenheim in an hour. The hour passes. Old Fritz Muller starts getting nervous. Maybe something happened to the car. Maybe something happened to us. What does he do? He's blowing his top by this time. He has to have the car back. So he calls the MPs in Wienheim. Have they seen his car? He describes it, and hey, they figure that's the same car that you were tipped off about earlier. Bang! You thought it was okay because we were driving it. Now you find out we only borrowed it. We weren't supposed to have had it in the first place. Something has to be wrong with this car. Find it. That's exactly how it worked. Listen, both of you did a great job. And you're going to hear about it. Uh, sir, is it all right if we hear about it later? You understand my position, Lieutenant? Uh, Sergeant, take my advice. I'm a married man myself. Before you go to Mannheim, better stop off at headquarters with me. The Major has something for you. me to believe a story like that? Honey, it's the truth. Okay, Harry, show her the letter. Although if I were you, I wouldn't. After all, if she really loved you, she would take your word for it. James Bell, what are you trying to instigate? Uh, here, honey. Uh, Major Thompson gave me a letter to show you. Are you a man or a mouse, Harry? Uh, never mind. Don't, don't answer that. Dear Mrs. Smith, <laughs> takes a lot for granted. The story your husband told you is absolutely on the level. I'm writing this because I, too, have a wife, and we married men must stick together. My very best wishes for... Harry! Harry, darling, you're a hero! You see, Harry, you did it all wrong. Now you'll never know whether she's marrying you for yourself or for the medal you're going to get. Well, congratulations, anyhow. I never thought you'd make it. <laughs> Young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know, and to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Learn all about the benefits you can have in the United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army. And this is Richard Hayes speaking. Inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>